Hey everybody, uh, Dr. Ann Cope with IDHS here at the National Disaster Resilience Conference. Um, and I'm here with my good friend, Dr. Rick Nav from the Weather Channel. Um, we're here to talk about um, hurricane season. Thank goodness it's over. See, right? you believe that another hurricane season has come and gone and it's been another busy and bad one. It really has been. Um, so, you know, by the numbers, I mean, there were a lot of storms. Several of them became major storms. Um, and, and yet, not that many made landfall. Um, though it was still a really big season. What are your takeaways from this season? Well, it, it's often the case that the total number of storms gets a lot of attention. You know, we exhausted the conventional list again with the 21 storms, but I'm not as focused on the total number of storms. I don't think that's the number or the issue to be focused on. It's like you say about where did they go and what were the impacts? And this was another bad year for the United States in many different locations in terms of both wind and water at the coast and the inland. So that's why we have to tell everybody before every hurricane season, not just at the coast, to prepare for both of those hazards. Yes. And uh, we have a lot to learn from this hurricane season uh, in a lot of places that were badly, badly affected. Oh, absolutely. I think I, I read something this morning. Um, Hurricane Ida, one of those that became a major storm and made landfall, um, is, is among the top five in terms of costliest disasters. Um, a, a terrible outcome from, from Ida, and it went up through Louisiana. Many people think about Ida in terms of Louisiana. But then she went on to cause um, problems throughout much of the Northeast. Um, I love your takeaway about it doesn't matter where exactly you're from, you should be prepared. Um, are there any other things that we should tell people um, in terms of you know thinking ahead for next year? Well, it's hard to avoid there being a lot of damage and unfortunately fatalities when a Cat 4 comes ashore. And I feel so badly for the folks in Louisiana who have had to endure multiple hurricane and major hurricane strikes over the last few years. But every storm is different, and Ida impacted some communities in ways that hadn't been impacted that way uh, for a while, in places like Grand Isle and Laplace with the horrible storm surge and wind and rain-induced flooding combined, and the, uh, the massive power outage impacts and the indirect effects and indirect loss of life in Louisiana. But then the combination of Ida and that frontal zone in the Northeast that produced rainfall rates that I hadn't seen in a long time that just held together going from Pennsylvania through New Jersey and New York City and the devastating impacts, not just in New York City, but in a large part of the Northeast from inland flooding. So one of the big takeaways that I've got from this hurricane season is that we all need to do more to prepare for inland flooding. That involves everybody being insured for flood, thinking about the flood risk of where you're going to buy or rent, uh, closing schools preemptively. Maybe we need a major flash flood watch instead of just a normal flash flood watch when we see this coming. Because meteorologically, we saw it coming. The issue is, do How people do take steps people? to be safe? Yeah, you know, absolutely. And you know, when we at IVHS think ahead, now that we're, we're, we're closing the door on this hurricane season, and we look ahead to the next hurricane season, because we are engineers and communicators, we think about the building when we think about resilience. Um, and I'm glad that you know we partner together with things with people who think about the people and what, what should the people be doing. Um, you know, as I think about buildings and how do people prepare their homes and their businesses and the places where they live and play and work, um, some of the most critical places: the roof, re-roofing in the right way, making sure that um, you have that seal roof that could keep that water out, that punishing wind driven rain. Isn't that amazing? That and you guys at IPHS showed me this firsthand. Yes. How taping the roof can make all the difference. Oh, yes. I mean, something that doesn't cost all that much can end up saving tens of thousands of dollars just by keeping the water out of the structure. Oh, absolutely. And when we think about um, the affordability of things like that, affordability of the seal roof deck, I love for people to think about affordability, not just in terms of purchase price, on day one, but in terms of cost of ownership. What's going to be the purchase price? What's going to be um, the cost of your insurance over the life of the, the house? And how are you going to be able to maintain it? Um, so sealed roof deck is something that comes to my mind when I think of the word resiliency um, and being prepared. What else comes to your mind when you think about resiliency for hurricane season? 
But thinking community wide, mm -hmm. uh, it does go back to where we build and rebuild in the first place. I mean, yes. you putting structures yes. in the most vulnerable spots to get repetitive flood losses is heartbreaking and really, really expensive. So there are uh, federal programs to relocate communities. There are ways to build a home that's more resilient to flooding and just not repeating the same flood disaster the same way over and over again in the same spot. So a lot of people in the Northeast now have learned again just how flood vulnerable you are in places like Eastern Pennsylvania and in Northern New Jersey and in New York City. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, in so many ways, um, a lot of the community's ability to be resilient is tied back to whether they have adopted and are administering a modern building code. And you've done some fun commercials uh -huh. uh, with, uh -huh. our, with our Flash colleagues about you know, making sure that you have um, and you understand um, building codes. What are some of your fun memories from doing those uh, cool commercials? Well, the most important message yes. for uh, people to understand is, and we learn through Flash about how most people just assume that building codes have taken care of every house and every house is built to the strongest possible standards right. and that's why we did that that public service announcement where we did the analogy with parachutes you know yeah. when you go onto an airplane to do skydiving mm -hmm. you need to know that that parachute was constructed yeah. packed properly and that it's going to work you're not just going to assume that Right? And we, we don't want to make those dangerous assumptions with our homes, and we need to all be asking a lot of questions mm -hmm. about what are the building codes in my community? Was my structure built to, and does it exceed, ideally, the building codes? The more we all ask questions about that issue, the more it becomes uh, a priority for builders for Absolutely. local officials Absolutely. and to enhance the building codes and to not just build to those codes but exceed them because that means we're all going to be safer and we're all going to save money. Oh, exactly. It's a win, 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 win. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. And, you know, I love those public service announcements um, that you guys do, you know, as a, as a former parachutist. Oh, I loved that one. That was my favorite one. Um, and if you're looking for that information, go to inspecttoprotect.org. Um, if you're looking for information about Fortify and how you can get a Fortify roof um, that will um, be resilient and uh, save you money over the long term, go to Fortify, go to IBHS.org and, and take a look at that. Uh, rely on uh, Dr. Nab for your um, next hurricane season uh, updates, you know, get ready for next hurricane season now. Um, and when hurricane season rolls around, make sure you stay tuned to the Weather Channel. Um, thank you so much for joining us here at the FLASH uh, National Disaster Resilience Conference. Um, see you again real soon.